in Math 30-2. We're going to do the next video here, mutually exclusive events. Uh, so remember what a mutually exclusive event was? It was this. They have nothing in common. So if you were like draw a Venn diagram or something, they would have nothing in common between the two. So they are mutually exclusive. So these two events have nothing to do with each other. So the fun thing about this is that they have nothing to do with each other. The probability of the both of them happening, like if I go A uh, and B, or A or B, sorry, it's just the addition of the two pieces together. Because it's all of this circle and all of this circle at the same time. Now, the probability of the both happening at the exact same time, that's a little and there, is zero. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing between them. So, but the fun thing is that if they're mutually exclusive, then you could just add the two numbers separately. So that's gonna be important for this because when we do this, the probability of event A happening or event B happening is just gonna be the addition of those two numbers. What's the event A plus event B all over the total sample set, just like the probabilities from before. So she rolls a two four-sided dice. What's the probability that the sum is uh, either six or an odd number? Because six is not an odd number. It's like this is six here and these are odd over here. They're definitely not, or they're definitely mutually exclusive. So the number that you can get, so if it's a four by four, again, remember this is a little grid that we had here before. This is my grid. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We're dealing with sums here. Or either, that is either six or an odd number. So the sums are six. When we have here, six, six, and six. Four and two, three and three, and two and four. So it's three of those. Okay? And odd numbers, let me just put those in there. Six and odd numbers are going to be, now if they overlap, this would turn green, but they're not going to overlap. One and two is three, three, five, 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 seven and seven. So those would be my odd numbers. I didn't draw them in there, but you can see that'd be three. These would be five, these would be seven. Eight would be in those spots, two and four would be in the other spots. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's a total of four by four, so that's 16. So pretty likely, actually, 11 out of 16 times we'll get this. You notice that nothing overlapped there. Those yellow and those blues are totally different. Xavier has two four-sided dice. Again, just like this. What's the probability that I roll a sum that is even or greater than five? So I could definitely do this again. So let's see. Getting kind of lazy with this little box. Actually, these boxes look nicer than before. A greater than five, so that would be uh, six, 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 seven, seven, and eight. So it would be those. And even. Oh, man. So this, these are not mutually exclusive, so there's going to be some overlap here. So we're going to have to worry about that. So if they're not mutually exclusive, remember there's another formula for this. You take the number of one add the number of the other and subtract out where they intersect each other. So these cases, this is not mutually exclusive. That's not spell exclusive. That's probably not right. What is it being S there? Sorry. So they're not. So you're going to subtract out this piece that overlaps. And you can see that when we do this sample space here, five, 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 four, 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 three, three, and a two. Okay. So I'm going to go through and just highlight. Let's do the even ones first. Two, four, 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 six, 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 eight. Okay. Now I'm going to highlight the greater than five numbers, greater than five. So greater than five, but not equal to five, just greater than five. So that's six, 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 seven, seven, eight. Oh, so there's eight and the sixes are being overlapped there. And then we're going to divide this by the total sample space, which is going to be 16. Okay. So if I do this by the formula, we're going to see how this works out. You can see here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 
there are 10 favorable outcomes. Yeah, so 10 favorable outcomes, just by looking at the picture. Now I wanna do this by using the formula. I wanna see if this works. So the number of even numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, there's eight of those. The number of numbers greater than five, one, two, three, four, five, six, you notice that those don't add up to 10, but I'm going to subtract out the, what they have in common. One, two, three, four. There's four things in common, the green spots there. If I did this, I get 10 out of 16. Uh, you probably want to reduce that down. 10 out of 16, let me just go out of the camera here. It's five over eight. Uh, put that down here, five over eight. There you go. You could have just done this and said divide by 16 as well. And this is the sample space at the bottom. And you get the same result. All right, I just used the formula just because I like using the formula sometimes. Um, also, remember that I'm going to give this to you. I'll get you to print this off. But there's a bunch of formulas here that tell us that as well. How this work out? You just have to realize which is which. Like they tell you on the formula sheet. Sorry, it's backwards here. The two options here. Focus area. Um, this one and this one below it. One has the minus, one doesn't. Which one are you going to use? So the mutually exclusive on the top and the non mutually exclusive on the bottom. Sorry, it's backwards. Just the way it happens to be. Okay. Uh, Lenny here is rolling two four sided dice. Yeah. Moves of the product. Okay. The product is even or greater than six. Okay. So let's go through. Determine the probability in each of these situations. Four-sided dice again. I need a product table this time. Okay. Products. Products. So one times one. One times two. One times three. Four. So it's going to have a pretty symmetrical shape here. Looks pretty good. Two times two is four. Okay. Two times three is six. And these are both be six then. Eight. Nine and eight, four times three is 12, 12, and then 16 at the bottom. Okay, so what do we have? The product is even. Let's go to the evens here. What did I do there? It's kind of strange. You get two and a three there. I think it's better. So even, 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 even. There's a lot of evens here. It's only a couple odds. Um, so 16, there's about 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, okay. So it's 12 even numbers greater than 6. Let's go through that. I'm going to use a different color here, so it's going to highlight and it's going to overlap. If it overlaps, it turns green. So greater than 6, so not including 6. So 8 is greater than 6, 9, 12, and 16. So there's those ones. So if I count those, one, two, three, four, five, six, there's only six of those that are greater than six. I don't know why that's over that side. So six of those, and there's 12 of those. Okay? You notice that there's one, two, three, four, five in common. No. But since I drew the picture, why not just use the picture? So the probability of these both happening. Um, if I use the formula, let's just use the formula because I have the numbers here minus the one, two, three, four, five they have in common here. And the total sample space is 16. Do, 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 do. I don't know why I'm typing this in my calculator, but 13 out of 16. Cool. Howard rolls one standard dice and a four-sided dice. You can move if the sum is even or greater than seven. Okay, so this is going to be tricky because I haven't drawn this table. It's going to be a longer table because I need one, two, three, four, five, six on this side, and then I only need one, two, three, four on this side. So I need to figure my sample space. So there's four by six. So my sample space is going to be 24. Okay. Uh, you can move to the sum. So we're doing sums here. So two, three, Four, five, six, seven, seven, seven. Remember this patterns here that we can utilize here to make sure that this works or make it a little bit easier on ourselves. 
Okay, the next one, that's a seven there, sorry. Uh, eight, 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 nine, nine, and then six, five, four, six, ten. Okay, so how many of these are even? Oh, it's gonna be a lot. Two, fours, so one, two, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, there's twelve of them that are even. Or seven. Yeah, okay, seven is definitely not an even number, so these are separate of each other. So I don't have to worry about subtracting anything in common like I did in the previous ones. So these two events are mutually exclusive. You could subtract what they have in common, just be zero. But I have 12 plus 4 out of 24 this time. There's 24 things in the sample space. Because it's going to be just 4 times 6, 24. Okay? So I have 16 over 24. Reduce that down. Oh, my calculator. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 2 over 3. 2 over 3 chance of this happening. I like those odds. Uh, bu, 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 bu. Sheldon rolls two standard dice. So standard dice are one to six. So that means there's going to be a 36. Okay, sample space here. Yeah, okay, good. I made that pretty good there. So I put the numbers on the bottom this time for some reason. Do you know why? Ooh, I'm sure there's a tool I can use to make a table in Word. There might be. Um, he divides a number on the red dice by the number in the blue. He can move if it is a whole number or a terminating decimal less than one. So we need to know which is which here. So let's call this the red dice on this side. Let's call this the blue dice on this side. So he's dividing by the blue number. Okay. So one by one, one divided by one, one divided by two is a half, but that's a terminating decimal. What if I should write that down? Hmm, I'll worry about that later. Uh, one third is not a terminating decimal. One fourth is a terminating decimal. One fifth is a terminating decimal. And one six is a repeating decimal. Okay. Well, it's going to be tricky. The sample space is going to be kind of crazy. Uh, so the probability of A happening or B happening, there's 36 in my total sample space here. I'm pretty sure there's a pattern I can find here. So two divided by one is, so all these numbers down here, because you divided by one, stay the same. Okay. Uh, if I divide four by two, I get two. If I divide six by two, I get three. Two. So right now I'm doing all the kind of the whole numbers. Okay. Two divided by no. Four divided by four gets me one. Six divided by six gets me one. You can see there's a bunch of ones here, but they skip past. Oh no, one divided by one. Three divided by three. So there's a bunch of ones. That's nice. Now uh, what do we have here? Five divided by three. That's not a nice number. I don't think I have any more nice numbers in this section. Six divided by three is a nice number. That's a two. And I don't get any other nice numbers there. But what I'm going to do for the rest of them, because I want a number that are less than one. Yeah. So what des a terminating decimal less than one. OK. So a terminating decimal less than one. Right now what I have is I have a half a fourth, and a fifth. So I know that. Just watch my calculator. Now my next one here is going to go 2 divided by 3. Nope. 2 divided by 4. Yep. I'm not going to actually put the numbers in here. I'm just going to highlight these areas. 2 divided by 5. Yep. Terminates is 0.4. 2 divided by 6. Nope. Okay. Uh, 3 divided by 2 is not less than 1 because the top number is greater than the bottom number. Okay. So 3 divided by 4. That's terminating 0.75. 3 divided by 5. Okay, good. And 3 divided by 6. That's a half. So we get an extra one on that row. Okay. 4 divided by 5. 0.8. It's terminating. 
terminating means just it stops. There's no decimal that repeats there. Four divided by six repeats. Five divided by six. You know, as I kind of skip the other side of this table because five divided by two, divided by three, divided by four. Those are all bigger than one. I'm not too concerned about that. So these numbers up here are the ones less than one and are terminated. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there's nine of those. Okay. Plus numbers. Uh, there are whole numbers. Remember, whole numbers are numbers with no decimals. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you notice that these are not going to intersect with each other. So these are mutually exclusive. Uh, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, this thing's going to go 14. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Yep, 14 of those. So this is 23 over 36. And I don't think that reduces because 23 is a prime number. Yeah, we're done. Cool. Okay, that was a bit trickier, a little bit more thought had to be put into that one to find out what the sample space was and what numbers of which here. Uh, penny rolls a four-sided dice. She can move two four-sided dice. She can move the difference between them is even or less than three. Difference. Let's draw the box out first. Okay. So I'm always, I'm, in this case, I'm just going to divide the larger by the smaller all times. So 0, 0, 0, 0. I think we did one of these before in one of our examples. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1. Yeah, there's some symmetry here between these. There you go. Look pretty good. Uh, so let's go through. So you can move if it's even. Two, two, zero, two, zero, 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 zero. Zero is definitely even. Okay. Less than three. We're going to have a lot of overlap here, actually. All of this is overlap. So. Let's see, it's going to be fun if I use the formula here, because the formula is going to do this. What do we have? We have of the even ones, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them. Of the odd, less than three, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 14 of those. And there are eight in common. And there's 16 in my sample space. So it's 14 over 16. Just because there's only two numbers there that are not. Two things there. So seven out of eight chances. It's going to work. There you go. Uh, no, I'm going to keep the going with this video. I know it's going to be a bit longer of the two videos. Yeah, let's keep on going. Uh, bag contains two yellows, three greens, five reds, six blacks. What's the probability of either a yellow? I should use yellow letters this time to represent it, or a red being drawn from the bag. They are definitely mutually exclusive. So the number of yellows plus the number of reds divided by the total number in the bag. So let's see, two plus three plus five plus six. So 16 in the whole bag. So seven out of 16. Definitely doesn't reduce any more because seven's prime. So that's it. Let's get rid of that equal sign. There you go. Pretty good. Actually, I'm just going to highlight this yellow with the yellow, red, let's call it magenta there, with the magenta. There we go. Looking pretty good. Ooh, this is fun. My curse is going all crazy. Okay. All right. Uh, Salim, Salim is about to draw a card at random from a deck. If he draws a face card or a red card, he wins a point. Now, because you can have face cards or red cards, they can both be at the same time, so these are not mutually exclusive. We'll have to figure out how many times they can cross. Actually, let's draw these out. I think I did this in my notes as well, the same question. We're just going to do it again. Uh, so face cards. There are, but remember what we had before, we had 12 face cards. 
Of the 12 face cards, six are red and six are black. Okay. And if I think about color wise, remember we had colors, it's 52 cut cards, 26 are red and 26 are black. We're not going to deal with jokers in this case. Oh, knows. Okay, so what do we have here? So we have 12 cards in total in the face card here, but six are red. So we have six in common here. And that means in this circle over here, we have 20 plus the six gives us 26 red. So this is the, are they mutually exclusive? No. The reason behind that, because we can have red face cards. All right. What's the probability of drawing a face card or a red card. Now, because we have a Venn diagram, that makes this a little bit easier. I don't have to worry about subtracting. If you wanted to, you can use the formula where you go with the total number plus, or the total number each minus what they have in common. So you could do that if you want to, which I just did, I guess. So 12 plus 26 minus 6. So that's 32 divided by 52. Math, enter, enter, and I get each over 13. I can also just go to the circle here and say, okay, at the top here, I have six plus six plus 20 over 52, which ends up being the same thing. It ends up being 32. Yeah, it ends up being 32 over 52, which ends up being eight over 32 again. So they both do the same thing if I use the Venn diagram or not. All right. Or I could just use the formula. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see what we have here. Mr. Allen uh, goes for a walk with his kids on Saturday. 70% of the time, or 0.7. He'll play a computer game 50% of the time. This is all on Saturday, right? Yeah. The probability that he'll do both is 30%. What's the probability he'll at least do one of these activities? So I'm going to draw a Venn diagram to do this one. Okay, so we have the probability of me going for a walk right here. Kids. This is the probability of a game. Uh, so what I know is that there's going to be a probability in between here of 0.3. Yeah, I write that on the side there. Now it doesn't say this is the probability I only play a video game. So that means that's going to be 0.2 because these two parts, this part and this part, they had to add up to 0.5. The same thing goes to the walk. It doesn't say I only go for a walk with my kid. So when I add these two boxes together, I should get 0.7. Okay. Uh, determine the probability he at least do one of these activities. All right. So the probability that I'll do at least one of these two activities is if I wanted to, I can use the formula based on the information here. I can go 0.7 plus 0.5 minus what I have in common. So I can do that. Or I can just add everything that's in the boxes there. Uh, oh, it's going to be a one. Everything's going to add up to one here. There's going to be some parts where I do nothing. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Actually, I think that is the case. I, there might be. Oh, yeah, there's a 10% chance I'll do nothing here. Uh, so there's a 0.9%. So there's a 90% chance I'll do at least one of these activities. And you can add that up. 0.4 plus 0.3 plus 0.2 plus 0.5 plus 0.4. That's 0.9, yeah. So I could just add those up in the boxes here. If I wanted to, I could say the probability of this happening, walking or game, I should probably should put that in there. It's just 0.4 plus 0.3 plus 0.2 divided by 1, 0.0. Ends up being 0.9 as well. So they're both the same. Uh, the odds against him playing a video game. Odds against. So the circle for odds for my circle here would be 0.5. And the everything else is 0.5. Everything adds up to that. So this is going to be a one-to-one -one chance. One-to-one -one odds that I'll actually play a video game too on Saturday. Okay. Uh, is my last one? Sure, right? Yeah, okay. In a large sample of married families in Canada, it was found that 80% had 
of the husbands and 60% of the wives are employed outside the house. In 80% of the cases, at least one spouse is employed outside the house, okay? At least one, okay? That means uh, in my Venn diagram, that's all the boxes together. That's my total amount. So I have a box here, I have a box here, okay? So what I know, because this is at least one spouse, at least one spouse, my, all my boxes, so the union of these two things are going to add up to 87%. So we have 80% for the husbands, 60% for the wives individually, and then together it's 87. Uh, must have probably been that both are employed outside the house. So I'm looking for this box in the middle. Question mark. Okay, so if I use my formula here, I can go with the probability of A plus the probability of B, because if right now if I add those together, there's definitely more than 87. I'm going to have to subtract out them both happening. So this is what I'm looking for, a little question mark there. So I can put the numbers here, 87, a, let's just say A is the husband's, 80, let's say B is the wives, minus whatever I'm looking for here. I'm just going to rearrange it. I'm just going to minus it. So what's 80 plus 60? So that's 140. Oops. 87 minus 140. So that question mark, which is the intersection between the two events, is 53%. I think that's all I needed to do. You could just think about that too if you want to draw the picture out. Uh, what's the probability that neither spouse is employed outside the home? Well, everything's got to add up to 100% here. And I already know 87% do at least one of these things. So what's left over? So, oh, it should be plus. So those two should add up to 100%. And you get 13. So there's 13% do neither of that. That's not good. It's a high unemployment rate there. Anyway. Cool. There we go. Okay, I'll see you in the next video uh, where we'll talk about, if I remember correctly, which I don't, uh, independent events, and then the next video after that will be dependent events. I'll see you then.